Sammy King Hearn was utterly dependent on her father Neil when she was a little child. She used to accompany him about the farm in the Scottish borders where Neil worked as a stockman, dressed in a little red boiler suit and wellies covered in dirt. She understood how to perform a caserine on a sheep, was managing the lambing shed by the age of eight, and had aspirations of working as a zoologist simé. She was my little shadow, remembers Neil, 59, who he and his wife Elaine still reside on the farm in Berwickshire, close to Gordon. Samantha's mother wanted to dress her up, but all she wanted to do was go outdoors, get messy, and follow me around. It was therefore not surprising to find Sammy, then 14 years old, and her best friend, who had been snowed in for a week together and were enjoying their time off school, nearby while Neil was using a forklift truck to clear snowdrifts from the farm on the afternoon of December 2, 2010. Sammy says, I remember Dad was quite overwhelmed. People in the rural cottages were unable to leave for shopping. Animals were perishing, and we had no idea when the snow would stop. I was dispatched with a friend to clean the dog kennel. We returned to the farm to collect more food because they had run out. As we were pushing the wheelbarrow along a track, Dad drove up behind us in the forklift, laughing and honking his horn. It irritated him that we were running around. For whatever reason, I chose to scale a portion of the forklift as my friend moved out to the side with the wheelbarrow. I still don't understand why I did it. I guess I assumed it would be humorous. I was trying to brag at the moment because there were other kids out. I recall chuckling as I looked at my pal. The events that followed continued to give Neil and Sammy nightmares. Neil dropped a bucket, which he had been using to shovel snow, on top of his daughter, not realizing she had climbed onto the lower portion of the forklift and not being able to see her from the cab. I recall experiencing a pressure on my neck, Sammy recalls. I burst out laughing because I felt my father was kidding and had gone a little too far. Then I let out a scream. My head was in my crotch before I even realized I felt my back explode. I was reduced to the size of a small ball. My heart was thumping in my chest, she continues. It all felt so sluggish, and my breathing was the only sound I could hear. You're going to die, and your dad is going to think it's his fault, is what I recall thinking as I closed my eyes. Upon opening my eyes once more, I walked forward. My legs were still moving, even though I couldn't feel it. I dripped and landed on a large mound of packed snow. I recall every muscle in my legs frothing. They were twitching until they abruptly stopped. The last time I felt my legs was then. After 13 years, the Kinghern family has gone through hell and back trying to come to terms with what transpired. However, 27-year-old Sammy has transformed a terrible tragedy into a victory that neither she or her parents could have imagined. Her current status as a double Paralympic medalist and world champion wheelchair racer is a testimonial to her incredible bravery and infuse in. She returned to her rural roots in the past year, having set a 100 meters record at the World Par Athletics Championships in Paris, received an MBE for her services to disability sport, and was hired to present BBC's Country File. And yet, she kept the facts of how she sustained her injuries hidden for years out of fear of exposing old scars for her father. In fact, Sammy told her parents a false story about her fall on some snow when Neil brought her into the kitchen following the mishap. I was having coffee with a friend, remembers Elaine, 55, who quit her job as a caregiver following Sammy's tragedy. The rear entrance suddenly opened, and Neil was holding Samantha. She was screaming for help and in excruciating pain when he lay her on the ground. We believed she had deceived herself. Did I hit you with the forklift? Neil kept asking. Have you made any contact? And she replied, no. She simply could not stop wailing in pain. Neil and Elaine saw their daughter hooked up to machines, cables, and breathing tubes when they were given the all-clear to go to the hospital. Sammy recalls, my dad wouldn't even look at me. He continued to gaze at the floor. My baby, my baby, we're so sorry, said the mother repeatedly. Each of them was a disaster. I was trying to reassure them that everything would be all right. I have a strategy. We'll overcome this. I didn't realize I had to be honest until the doctor visited and spoke with me later that evening. Sliding over could not have caused the fractures in my vertebrae. She tried to protect me from the start, 
Neil continues. She didn't tell us she had gotten aboard the forklift until the following day after she had been evacuated to the spinal unit in Glasgow. I had always warned her about the potential for death from farm machinery. She and her brother were instilled with that from an early age by me. She therefore placed the blame on herself. And it was my own fault. I felt none. And that's when I began to analyze it and ask myself, what the hell have I done? It completely destroyed our lives. Remarkably, Sammy, having been told by doctors that she would never walk again, began making plans right away, demonstrating her maturity. I recall thinking, all right, this is your punishment for being foolish because you did this to yourself, the woman recalls. I thought maybe I'd do an online university course or invent something to help people like me, the man said. At that time, I thought I was going to be stuck in bed forever. After that, Sammy spent six months in the hospital, during which time her brother Christopher, 31, took time off from the army to be by her side, and Neil and Elaine alternated in making the three-hour round trip to Glasgow twice a week. Observing all of my friends attend parties and go to school was annoying, she recalls. I wanted to do those things, but I was confined to the hospital and had to learn basic life skills like putting on my pants and getting into bed. The hardest thing was that but it wasn't too bad. Many beautiful people I met were in far worse situations than myself. I started doing physiotherapy during the day and tutoring at night. I was able to overcome it with my family's assistance. But back on the farm, Neil was having trouble. He started to feel suicidal. He says in an impassioned voice, I couldn't help wondering what her life was going to be like. I was unable to give her her legs back, even though I wanted to take them back. I was concerned about him, the lane acknowledges. There's no guilt that would never have occurred to anyone, but it's difficult to shake the shame that he was involved. They attribute their reunion to their resolute and cheerful daughter who served as the glue between them all. When Sammy was able to use her wheelchair to recover some freedom, she was overjoyed. The family relocated into a larger, wheelchair-accessible farmhouse with financial assistance from Neil's boss, whose estate they reside on. Sammy's eyes were open to a whole new life objective in 2011, though, when her physiotherapist took her to Stoke Mandeville Hospital in Buckinghamshire to attend the Interspinal Unit Games, a nationwide tournament for patients with spinal cord injuries. I was stunned to see a girl in a wheelchair racing, she remembers. She had amazing strength, speed, and style. This excited me much because, as a teenager, all I wanted was to be cool. She outran every runner in speed. Seeing it was incredible. At that moment, I knew it was what I wanted to accomplish. The King Hearns raised the 4,500 pounds required to purchase Sammy a racing wheelchair with vivid pink wheels with assistance from their neighborhood, and she was gone. Nothing could stop her from completing the demanding training on a track in Glasgow and a specially designed treadmill in her parents' garage. Sammy finished second in her debut competition, the London Mini Marathon in 2012. It was like peace in my head as soon as the gun went, the woman recalls. I was unable to hear any sounds around me. I just kept pushing till I crossed the finish line. It came naturally to me. That was the first of many honors to come. Upon acquiring a coach, she began training twice daily, six days a week and in 2016 she achieved qualification for the Rio Paralympic Games by placing fifth in the D53 100 meters. That turned on a light in her head, Neil claims. She wanted to start winning once she realized she could be on the podium. Since then, Sammy has taken home two gold medals from the 2017 World Championships and two gold and two silver from July of this year. With bronze and silver medals from the Paralympics GB in Tokyo in 2021, she also made it to the Paralympic podium. Now, her goal is to win gold in Paris the following summer. Neil and Elaine, who have attended practically every race, are incredibly proud. Every time she wins a medal, I cry, Neil acknowledges. I have a lump in my throat when I watch her approaching the last straight, and I'm a wreck when she goes over that boundary. I've been crying non-stop since the accident. I'm crying even if we're just watching her on TV. Seeing her pursue her passion and excel at it means a great deal. To save money on hotel costs in the beginning, Delane remembers that they purchased a camper -an. 
Since then, they have traveled all over the world to support Sammy's profession, including Switzerland, Spain, Italy, and Dubai. Elaine remarks, she's always been so determined. I don't want you to be my caregiver, she told me straight away. You should be my mother. Neil claims that despite his desire to go back and change things, Sammy and he have become closer as a result of the disaster. I improved as a father, he acknowledges. It radically altered my perspective on what matters in life and increased my emotional transparency. Samantha and her brother followed me around the farm because they wanted to spend time with me, although I was probably overly preoccupied with my work at the time. It seems appropriate that I'm the one trailing her right now. Sammy aspires for the upcoming games to increase the prominence of disability sport, which she believes has lost impetus since the pandemic. It's a serious blow that our races are still left out of major event TV coverage and that the prize money isn't comparable to that of competitions for competitors with able bodies. I'll never give up trying to make that chain. Her aim is still to win a gold medal in the Paralympics, but her family and friends come first. What makes me proud is being able to share my successes with the people I love, she states. Obviously, it feels amazing to win, but the best part is getting to see them to celebrate after the race. For now, Sammy has something much more wonderful to focus on, a wedding. Callum Eitken, a 28-year-old electrical engineer she met online and has been dating for five years, proposed to her last month while on an African safari. Elaine describes him as a really wonderful youngster and Scottish, too. She is planning a return visit to the family farm in a few weeks, as she does annually to commemorate the accident's anniversary, along with her partner Callum, with whom she lives in Nantwich, Cheshire, or, to use her own words, the beginning of her new life. I never want to spend a day with my parents by themselves, she declares. We all still think about it because it was such a terrifying experience, so we come together for a beautiful dinner and a drink of champagne, then settle down to talk. Does she ever allow herself to consider what might have happened if events had gone differently? Naturally, I do. Naturally, I would do anything to undo the pain I was in and the way it affected my parents, and I would take it back if I could. However, I like to think that I still would have achieved greatness in my life. I wouldn't change where I am now or what I've done since then, even if I didn't intend it this way. My entire family and I have learned from what transpired that anything may happen in an incident. You need to savor it while it lasts.